Hi guys, Marcus here, and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, March 3rd, 2020 edition. In this edition, Xiao Zhan's camp apologizes for the archive of our own controversy. An eternal love of dreams surpasses 5 billion views. But first, Revenge and Sacrifice is an upcoming costume drama starring Ellen Rin and Zhang Huiwen. The drama tells the story of a young master who rescues a young maiden who's searching for a magical healing pearl. Ellen Run recently starred in Under the Power with 710. Under the Power had a successful run, hitting number one in viewer ratings for many weeks, something I'm sure Ellen Run would love to emulate with revenge and sacrifice. Zhang Huiwen was last in Nirvana and Fire 2, and I remember enjoying her performance in that. Revenge and Sacrifice was rumored to premiere on February 29th. I kept an eye open for it, but it never came out, so the wait continues. I will provide more updates on it when they give them. Like a Flowing River Season 2 is an upcoming modern drama starring Wang Kai and Yang Shuo. It is of course a sequel to the first season, and I'm assuming it will continue where the first left off. Wang Kai returns as the modern and brilliant deputy leader of a chemical company, whereas Yang Shuo returns as the brash but amiable village chief in this story set in developing China in the 70s. I'm certainly watching out for this as I love season 1. It was one of the best dramas of 2018 in my opinion. Certainly some of the best acting, and not just from the leads, but also from the talented supporting cast. Only thing is that it suffers from what I call Game of Thrones Syndrome. It's been so long since the last season that I can't even really remember it anymore. Wang Kai hasn't had anything come out since season 1, but Yang Shuo has had 3 dramas air, the latest of which was Return the World to You with Guli Naja. I will give more updates on Like a Flowing River 2 when they provide them. And before we get to Xiao Tan and Eternal Love of Dream, a quick word on ExpressVPN. Whether I'm at home or traveling, the first thing I do before I surf the net is log on to ExpressVPN and connect to a server. Not only do I use ExpressVPN to protect my data from spies and hackers, I find it especially useful to unblock geo-restricted content like dramas and movies on YouTube, Netflix, and other websites. ExpressVPN is giving away 3 extra months free on a 12-month plan to all viewers of my channel. All you have to do is use the link in the description box below, expressvpn.com forward slash Marcus Sim. Xiao Zhan Studio issues apology over archive of our own controversy. So quite a bit has been said about this in the past couple of days, and I will try to shed some light on this as I understand it. It has to do with archive of our own, which recently became a victim of Chinese censorship. What is archive of our own for those of us who don't know? Archive of our own, or AO3 for short, is a Yugo winning fanfiction website. According to their website, they are fan-created, fan-run, non-profit, non-commercial archive for transformative fan works like fan fiction, fan art, fan videos, and podfic. Basically, people can go to the website and share stories they've written featuring characters from movies, TV dramas, comics, etc. Those of you who aren't familiar with the genre, do check out the website. I recently did and found it quite interesting. Anyway, The Untamed, being the super popular drama that it is, is the source of many of these fictional works. Stories of what could have been or what happened after the finale have been shared on the website. However, it seems a section of Xiao Zhan's fans were offended by some of these stories and demanded they be taken down, especially the ones that focused on his romance with male characters. These fans even went so far as to report them to the censorship authorities in China. And this is where the controversy lies. On February 29th, reports surfaced that AO3 was no longer accessible in China. The Organization for Transformative Works, the group that runs the website, confirmed the ban. This has reportedly led to cases of AO3 fans who now no longer have access to the website, threatening to hurt themselves. Obviously, AO3 and the fanfic world mean a lot to them. And just a word on that situation, I really hope it gets resolved as soon as possible, and these people get all the help they need, be it medical or emotional. So now the question arises, was Archive of Our Own's ban a result of the big stir caused by that section of Xiao Chan's fans? Well, that is the speculation. However, it's no secret that the government continually cracks down on queer and sexually explicit content, so it could very well just be that and have nothing to do with the big stir. You can be your own judge of that, but personally, I feel it's a bit too much of a coincidence. 
Xiaochan Studio released a statement regarding all of this. We extend our deepest regrets and apologies to those affected by this. At the same time, we appeal that all love should be positive and productive, and hope that everyone can pursue their idols within reason. They continue to say that Xiao Chan has been in isolation at home and supports the control measures to help fight the epidemic. I personally feel that Xiao Chan and his camp are not responsible for this. Superstars like Xiao Chan will have extreme fans. He can't possibly be responsible for all their actions. As its name implies, Archive of Our Own is just that, a place where people can come and share stories of their own. If people don't like it, they don't have to be a part of it. Eternal Love of Dream has two positive updates for fans. The first is that as of March 1st, it has surpassed 5 billion views, and that's just on Chinese streaming platform Tencent alone. It's also been the number one web drama in China for a couple of weeks now. The 10 Miles of Peach Blossom spin-off might have premiered to mixed reviews, but it seems to have really picked up. From what I have read, there are a few reasons for this. It stayed faithful to the novel, it's got gorgeous CGI, and it's got a pleasing soundtrack. I've also read comments that the acting has improved, and that the story, which has now moved into Arania's dream arc, has picked up. The second positive update is that its top on rating has now increased to 6.1. Admittedly, that's not a super exciting score, but considering that it was under 5 when it first came out, 6.1 ain't too shabby. Another reason for the drama surge in popularity could also be Van Gogh Gao's recent Weibo outing. A few days ago, he held a session in which he interacted with fans in character as Donghua Dijun. The session pleased many of the drama's fans and garnered nearly 100,000 comments. Vengo has been receiving positive feedback on his portrayal of three character personalities on the drama. His on-screen romance with Del Raba has also consistently trended online. In an interview, he attributed this to their chemistry. There's always a sense of freshness when working with Del Raba, he said. When we improvise, we always click very smoothly. He also said that there's always an abundance of laughter on set, and that one time he laughed so hard at Lawrence Wang's acting that his wig fell off. Sounds like a wonderful set to work on. I haven't really been following Eternal Love of Dream. Those of you who have, would you agree with the assessment that it's gotten better? Or did you already love it right from the start? Let us know in the comment section below. And that's it for this edition, guys. This show would not be possible without your support, whether it's through Patreon or simply by watching, liking, and subscribing. So thank you all for watching, and as always, I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.